Hello, it's Carly. I'm back on day 43 of Bright Line Eating. And um, just wanted to kind of check in, an accountability check in more or less for myself because been, I've been slipping off track, it seems like a lot lately, and uh, don't like that. So I want to kind of rein it in and get back and get excited and um, just kind of, this is more like me talking to myself and figuring out what steps I need to take to um, get back on track and finish this thing and <laughs> keep going and win the race and, um, you know, um, complete my goal and then stay on track, keep at my goal weight, <sighs> which I'm not at yet. So uh, let's see, where did this all start? Things just kind of started going off track um, over the weekend. I don't know if I had too much going on. I didn't feel stressed out or anything, but we had my son's birthday party on Saturday. So we had four little boys over, 12 year old boys, and um, we had a themed birthday party. It was kind of like knights and middle ages, medieval theme. So we had a lot of fun with that and we decorated and did a lot of homemade decorations and things. Um, but uh, we ordered pizza for the boys because that's usually a safe bet with 12 year old boys. And I don't know, I think it was just the combination of being so busy that day and a little bit of stress and my weakness. It was just like, I had so much weakness when I saw and smelled the pizza and I, I just let myself, I said, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to have one piece of pizza and one turn into three. So, um, you know, that's kind of, that's probably the normal portion of pizza that I used to have before I stopped eating gluten, first of all, and then stopped eating flour and sugar with bright line eating. So number one, I was breaking my own sort of contract with myself to um, not eat gluten. And, you know, well, I think the major reason to not eat gluten is that it's in a lot of junk food items like you know, pastries or cookies or whatever. So, um, yeah, it has made me feel better to not eat gluten, but the main thing that makes you feel better, I think, is not eating sugar or flour. So, um, so having the pizza was a mistake, I admit. And having even one piece, it's just don't go there, I would say. And I should have, I did, I did have a salad ready. But I guess I didn't have the rest of my meal ready, so it was kind of like I just fell prey to not having food prepared. I mean, we ordered the pizza and the boys ate, and then I would have had to get up from the... I would have had to get up and make my vegetables or just at least get some raw chopped vegetables ready for myself. And, um, and then eat that salad that I wasn't really looking forward to eating as much as... As much as I would have liked and did like the pizza. So that's where it kind of went off track for me. And then uh, there were lots of other tempting foods around. Um, I had a couple cookies. Uh, they were like um, Pepperidge Farm Chessmen cookies. <laughs> oh, and the next day, Sunday, uh, I knew I probably wouldn't feel 100%. I was a little tired anyway from staying up late and, um, and stuff and being busy with the party, but I did. I had like a food hangover. I felt like I felt almost like I had had a few glasses of wine the night before or the day before, and so food hangovers are a real thing. <laughs> I think didn't feel my best. Today's Monday, and I do feel better today. I feel a little bit more cleaned out and. Um, yesterday I stayed on track with my bright lines, ate my bright line food. But um, then again today, see I made the mistake of buying some Halo Top ice cream at Walmart the other day when I was there. And why would I even do that, you know? And I knew this when I was buying it. Why would you even buy that? Because it's not like my son or my husband is going to eat that. I bought that for myself. So I was setting myself up. For failure and I know it's halo top yeah they say it only has 300 calories per pint and I don't even eat the whole pint in one sitting but 
it's got sugar alcohols and so it tastes extremely sweet so you're getting desensitized to sweetness again and I don't think sugar alcohols are good for you either. No form of sugar is good for you. Not stevia, not xylitol. So I kind of feel like a failure, but um, I know that I can. I know that I can do this. Um, I, obviously, I still have like either food addiction or sugar addiction. So it's. I don't know if I need to. I mean, I hate to say it, but the, eating the chocolate probably doesn't help either. I've still let myself have dark chocolate, even though it's 88% dark chocolate. I know that that's not part of the plan. Um, I should probably just like set it, set a goal for myself to go one whole day without any chocolate or any any sugar, anything off off plan, and. I mean, usually it's just the chocolate is the only thing that I eat off plan, but oh, um, that's kind of what I'm facing. And um, also, I mean, I had the hormonal stuff going on, the the cycle thing going on, so I think that also helped with my um, cravings kind of coming into play there. Which, um, I shouldn't use that as, as an excuse, but... Um, you know, I was feeling like a bit of a failure before that because my weight had popped up. I think it was due to cyclical water retention, which I get, you know, I get like three pounds of water retention per month and then and then it seems to go away. But it takes about a, it takes about a week to really clear out of my system. Um, so it's annoying. I probably should go to also down to weighing myself once a week instead of every day, but I was telling myself that that wasn't affecting me to see my weight every day, and I do give myself grace. I just, I think there's grace, just like God gives us grace. <laughs> I try to give myself grace if the weight doesn't drop like I want it to in one day, or doesn't drop at all, but, um, yeah, so those are some real practical things that I think I need to lean into setting a goal to go all day without any chocolate or sugar and maybe moving towards weighing myself once a week. And the third thing that I really should start doing is writing down my food for the next day. Um, I had, I've had i only done that about five or six times over these 40 days that I've been bright line eating and uh, so far I had been okay. Um, like I said in my last video, I, there weren't, I didn't really have very many hiccups, but with this last weekend being kind of problematic for me, and then, um, going into today, just succumbing to eating that Halo Top ice cream, like half, half a pint of that, uh, I don't know what, why I'm allowing myself to do that, um, I don't know if it's, if I'm genuinely needing more calories and hungry because it could be something I don't know I'm I'm on the tall end of things for a woman I'm five foot eleven but uh, so maybe I need a little bit more food I don't know <laughs> or if it's just that um, it's a mental thing I've just kind of let myself go a little bit anyway I don't know. I talked to my mom about the program, um, and she I let her borrow the book because I told her, you really need to take the book or at least these handouts that I printed off when I did the 14-day challenge. And because um, she was like, why are you eating fruit at lunch? I thought we didn't, I thought there was no fruit at lunch. I thought it was only at breakfast. And I said, no, you know, you need to look this over because you're missing out on some details here. So I hope she reads the book, but what were we talking about? Um, she said, well, you don't need to lose, you know, it's just like Susan says, that your loved ones or friends will say that to you. Well, you don't, you're not going to try to lose very much more weight, are you? Like, uh, I don't think you need to, right? And I mean, it's so easy for me to fall prey to that thinking, like to have the body dysmorphia. And I mean, I don't know what I look like, you know, I, I would like to lose 
I don't know, nine more pounds, eight more pounds, really, I would really like to. I don't think that would be too much. I've been lower than that before in my life and felt good, and I didn't even feel too skinny then. But I was, I just told my mom, I said, yeah, you know, like five, five pounds. So it's just, it's this mental thing with weight loss when, especially when you get close to your goal, I think, um, or when you start the, this program close to your goal. Like I started probably 15 pounds, maybe 18, um, away from my goal weight. So I don't know. It's, it's hard to know when, when you should kind of just be content with yourself versus, you know, keep pushing. I'm very, I'm a pretty ambitious person and I will keep pushing myself if I feel like I need to. So I don't know if internally my, my head saying you're good the way you are, but then I don't think that because there are still clothes that I can't fit into that I fit into three years ago. And I, I want to be able to fit into those. And it was only three years ago, so I should be able to do that. Um, so that's kind of my sob story for today. <laughs> and, um, just got to get up, get back on track. I really feel like this whole journey is way more than about weight loss. It's, it goes so much deeper than that. And I do feel like <clears throat> my help for this comes mainly from my relationship with God and just drawing closer to him and asking for help and direction and guidance and, um, just always seeking him first in everything I do, um, trying to be more like Jesus in every way that I can. So we had a, you yeah, know, we had a couple weeks when we went on vacation that, you know, we weren't at church because we were gone. So, and then, uh, I missed this class that I'm taking to about prayer and, um, getting deeper into your prayer life. So tonight we're going back to that because I missed that last week. It was on my son's birthday. We didn't want to just leave him on his birthday. But those are things, your spirituality, I think, is if that's a part of your life um, already or if you're, if you're starting to let him into your life that way, I think that can really be powerful in um, discovering, you know, who you are your identity and and just um, letting him be in control instead of you. <laughs> so I guess those are my big revelations and my um, honest uh, admittances of failure, um, which I think everybody is going to have. I, I'd be real surprised if anybody could say they were perfect, but yikes, maybe they can. <laughs> anyway, um, none of us are perfect. And, um, uh, you know, the good thing is I have the knowledge of this and I know what to do and I know that it works. So if I have to make some tweaks to what I've been doing, then I do. So those are just some self-examination things I'm looking at. And I hope that your journey is going well. And um, let me know in the comments. All right, bye.